G'day guys, welcome back to Supercoach with DR and welcome to the round 13 review. Hope you all had a rip of around yourself this week. Well, the second buy round is now behind us. Good news, but I'll tell you what, it's also a good chance for people to start moving up the ranks a little bit. Personally for me, it was a pretty solid round. After what was looking like an absolute disaster early on the week, the boys really managed to bring it home. And this was only with 17 on field including Owen. So pretty wrapped with the score for this round and did manage to move up the ranks and now at 3,089. So in the top 2%, well, I managed to stay there after this buy round. I'm not too sure, but I'll go through my plans in a little bit. Now, it was a little bit of chaos to start the week, wasn't it? I know in my personal circumstances, there were three blokes that I was expecting to play. I'd basically penciled in. That was Rioli, Hayes, and Connor McDonald. All of a sudden, team sheets come out and they're not playing. Spanner in the works, absolute carnage. Now, I know for me, I made an absolute panic trade. And talk about a last minute panic trade. There was 10 seconds to go before the start of this match. In that pressing confirmed trade, and then my heart just sank basically as soon as I did it. But that's what's going to happen after a couple of beers under your belt and wanting to get a real advantage over the competition. But it is what it is. We'll talk about that when I actually show you what the team's looking like. It was actually good for me as well this week to actually get an eye test for the first time in a long time. Just haven't been able to watch full games of football due to the fact that I've been so crook. There was only one match that I didn't watch the full game. I did watch up until half time, but being a non Stephen Cornelio owner, well, an ex Cogs owner and also an ex Lockie Whitfield owner, but particularly Cogs, it was just like a dagger in my heart. At half time, had to turn it off, listen to some classical music, and uh, yeah, just not think about the game because he had an absolute blinder and it really hurt not having him this week. But uh, look, that's all for the intro. I'll take you through how the team's actually looking at this stage, take you through how I'm looking for the last buy round, and then talk about my trades and how my final team will be looking after this week. So all the best, guys. Let's see how we're looking. So you can see the current situation we got here, 143K remaining in the bank, nine trades left. Obviously, we can use three this round. I have one more spot to fill. That's in my forward line, but I will need to also fix up a mistake. Maybe not this week, but within the next couple of weeks anyway. But look, I'm pretty happy to start off in my defense this week because every one of the players that I had did their job. The lowest score I had was a 97 from Georgie Hewitt. His range has been from basically 111 to 120 for the whole season bar one or two matches. I can forgive him for going three under the ton. So if that's my lowest score in defense this week in a buy round, I'll take that. That's fine. Sinclair just continues to play good football. This is his third week in a row where he's really shined, dominating down there in the back line, getting some easy football, taking some of the kick-ins. It's basically rinse and repeat for the last three weeks, so got a really nice role. And again, I'll repeat this again, probably the only downside is the fact that the opposition surely has to put a little bit more attention into him. Uh, Hewitt, we mentioned, almost got to the ton. That's all good. Uh, really low-scoring game for Carlton Mids. Cripper was the only one that went half-decent, to be honest. Uh, Crispy, a one 19. Fantastic game from him. He was pretty huge during this game, particularly in the first quarter. I think he had about 13 touches for over 40 points. Set himself up really nicely and then just continued for the majority of the game. Had a quiet patch here and there, but generally pretty consistent. So wrap with Crispy's 119. Uh, Doherty 139. Absolutely fantastic. So he's not a huge pod, but he's a bit of a pod in the back line. If you took the punt on him this week coming off the bye, then congratulations. Um, he's been a pretty recent addition to my side along with Jack Sinclair. Only mistake I made there, I think, was going Doherty the week before Sinclair. That's when Doherty had his 79, which was his lowest score for the year. And Sinclair went along, smashed his, or didn't smash his break even, but did get his highest score of the year. So apart from getting the order wrong, I think I've got two pretty solid players in there. Uh, Shorty went on over the time, so 102, that's okay -ish. McCartan didn't play. Sicily with a 116, again, absolutely fantastic here. Love him as a pick. Basically a Sicily game, wasn't it? Some contested intercept marks, took a few of the kick-ins. When he gets it, kicks it generally, kicks it long. Couple of clangers there in turnovers, but 116, yep, absolutely fantastic from him. Uh, all right, so now what have I done here? So let me just get these blokes actually back on. So Brayshaw's on... McRae was obviously off. Sorry, my internet has been absolutely terrible lately. And uh, we had Miller off. So we'll get track back on. 
So, yeah, look, the captaincy for me, I did. And, look, you can actually see here now this monstrosity of a trade that I made. But I will get to that in a little bit. Uh, captaincy for this week, I did end up going with Clary. At half time. this was looking like a potential double ton. So a little bit disappointed that he really slowed up in the second half. But 141 points for a captain with what I've been punching out lately. I'm absolutely wrapped with. So good on you, Clary. Just dominated 40 flop possessions. Was looking like a 50 plus at one stage as well. So uh, the pig absolutely did his job this week. Love owning him. Uh, Neil, he'll have a well-deserved break this week. 123 points. Look, if you had have locked this in as your captain score, as your vice captain score, I would have been absolutely fine with that. And that's probably the advice that I would have given even if you had the option of putting the captaincy on Oliver. I'm going a little bit safer this year after my captaincy carnage. So don't beat yourself up about that. I think that's a fine score. Uh, Brayshaw, 135. I tell you what, again, I say this every week, owning Brayshaw, he looks so much better than 135. I thought this was, you know, 145 at least. And it may be nitpicking there, but I thought that he absolutely dominated. So, yeah, terrific. I've probably downplayed his ability. I was speaking to a bloke on Twitter about his top five potential, you know, top five player in the comp potential. And I did downplay that a little bit. I said, look, I don't think he's really in the conversation. But after watching him closely the last couple of weeks in particular, I've got to give it to him. This bloke is an absolute star. So hopefully he can really push to that M8 type average. Will he get there? I'm not too sure, but definitely between 8 to 12 is my prediction anyway. Uh, Kripa really bounced back, so he was the highest scoring Carlton mid, 126 points. Very similar to Neil. If you had to take his VC score, that's all good. Zeret was my trade-in, so his disposal count was right down. The only thing that made me feel okay about trading in Merritt this week was the fact that the other two blokes that I would have brought in, in Walsh or Parrish, both went under 90. So Parrish, that's super unfortunate for owners. We'll talk about those two blokes in the stock market video. So that was sort of the only positive, I suppose, to bring in Merritt. Just went above his break even. But yeah, he'd been pretty consistent with his 100 plus scores. Coming up, uh, you know, 130. I thought that he could really bounce back. Unfortunately not, I still think he can be an okay M8 type selection for us. Uh, track was actually looking pretty good up until three quarter time, but really slowed up in the last 99 points. Yeah, that three round average now is really, really poor. You're getting him at an absolute steal now, coming off his buy. Well, if you can wait a week or two after that, yeah, he'll be one of the biggest steals of the season, I think. But can you wait that long? I'm not too sure. But certainly if you are planning on getting a mid after this week, he's probably the man to bring in just purely because of his price. But form isn't fantastic, I suppose. Uh, Carol didn't play. Uh, Owens, geez, as I mentioned, super unfortunate. I watched this bloke go head first a couple of times and he went in hard. So super unfortunate uh, for many, many super coaches. He was, the, I think, the most popular traded in player this week. So the fact that he's not playing next week, yeah, hurts our buy structures yet again. But more concerned for him uh, as a human, the fact that he was pretty heavily concussed. Yeah, highly courageous player though. Uh, McRae will be back this week, as will Tuke, as will Greg Clark. So that'll be nice. Do I even want to speak about this? Well, I've got to, don't I? All right, let's talk about a little bit of this method to the madness. Well, there wasn't. There wasn't. There was a few beers under the belt, as I said. Look, had an, had an old mate come around. He's a Mad Tiger supporter. We got talking super coach, got a few into us. And then I went into a little bit of panic mode. Now, I'm not blaming Ken Hinckley. I made my own decision. But given the fact that Sam Hayes was out, I thought, man... This is just so tough now. You know, I was going to be going with 16. I thought, I just can't do that. Missing out on Gorn the week before has really, really hurt me. Cogs as well has been an absolute killer. I thought at this stage of the season, particularly during the buys, I can't afford to go back a couple of thousand ranks, you know, get towards that six, 7,000 spot. I just can't afford to do it because I, I won't be able to claw back into a decent position. I, I don't think anyway with the cattle that I've currently got. So... It was a bit of a panic move. I looked at my options. I thought, well, if I'm going to trade out and do this pod move, which was a silly move in the end, but trade out a premium type player in order to get, you know, 120 points advantage this week, who am I actually going to trade out? So I looked at the midfield options. I thought to myself, well, maybe a Parish, maybe a Walsh type. And then I looked around my rucks and I thought, look, the last bloke I actually want to trade out is Jared Witts. It's a crazy, it's such a rookie move. But the way that the craziness worked out in the end was the fact that Nank had a break even in the 50s. 
Sam Hayes wasn't playing, so Nank was coming up against a portless ruck. His three-round average was in the mid-120s. I just thought there is so much to like about this pick short term. He's in under 3% of size, and I thought if he goes anywhere near his projected score, which I think was a 119, 120, then surely that's got to be a massive leg up on the competition. I had a feeling that Proust wasn't going to get named. That happened in the end. Hayes, obviously a popular selection, wasn't playing. Uh, and Jared Witt as well, obviously is a pretty popular selection these days, also wasn't playing. So I thought this could be a massive advantage. I thought that Darcy could have the potential to go really big. That's why I actually had him as my vice captain. So I should actually swap that back. So yeah, that was a bit of the method to the madness. And I thought to myself, well, if he goes around that 120 with a break even of 50 odd, in a couple of weeks, he could be at Witt's price anyway. Then it'll just be a bit of a quick swap again. Now, I'm not sure if I'll be able to do that with a quick swap. It may involve two trades, which is really, really going to hurt me. So it was a silly move in the end, trying to get too much of an advantage, but that was a little bit of the method to the madness, just to talk you, I suppose, yeah, give you a bit of an insight into the way my mind was thinking. It was not thinking straight, though. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's going to hurt, I think, long term. We'll see how we go, though, with Nank. Coming up against Carlton as well, so... Yeah, I think he could bounce back, but the fact that Soldo played a pretty decent game, I think they'll share those duties a little bit too much for my liking. Just unfortunate. I thought that I yeah, could get an advantage, Joe. Shrek Darcy, you know, looking at him compared to Gorn, particularly in Gorn's first quarter before he got really sore, Gorn does so much more around the ground. Gorn is so much more dangerous around the ground. It just looks like he's going to clunk those marks. With Darcy, it's like he's always in the middle of a pack with four to six players, and he just doesn't realistically look like he's actually going to pull one in. So I think that's the big difference between him and Gorn. And not having that eye test particularly the last few weeks, I was looking too much at his ceiling and potential to go away from the crowd. But as I've said for years and years playing this game, if you do decide to go away from the crowd and decide not to go with someone like a Max Gorn, who we know what his, we know what his potential is like. That's why I actually started Gorn this year. I started him for a reason. End up going to wit, so it ended up working out okay, don't get me wrong. But yeah, it was it was a bit of a silly move in the end. Will it work out towards the end of the season? I still do believe in his ceiling, but the eye test to me, yeah, he didn't look fantastic. And actually copped a little bit of a knock. I think it was in the last quarter, might have been late in the third. So the fact that he's got the bye this week will actually be good for him, I think. Rest up, hopefully come out strong, play really well against Carlton. Hayes. Look, I might have to get rid of him this week. I hope that he plays. Even if he does, I may still actually trade him out, which is unfortunate. But yeah, just await team sheets and see what we'll do there. Uh, so we didn't have English or Dunkley playing. Brody obviously did, so I'll quickly just swap him back on. McDonald didn't play as well. Uh, Parker didn't play. Roses didn't play. Rioli really, really hurt me. So I was expecting him to be on field. So that's one spot I was down. Two spots I was down, so that gives me 18, 19, and then, you know, maybe a Carroll for 20. So super unfortunate there, but that's just the way it is. That's just the way it is. Um, and Rioli, who, yeah, I don't know if I mentioned Rioli, and McDonald. Brody, I can forgive him for this game. Now, there's been a little bit of talk that Fife has affected him. Well, Fife comes in, he gets, you know, an 82. We've got to trade him out. Fife is just going to do too much damage to him. I don't think that that was actually the case. He still attended, I think, the most CBAs for Frio. He just had a little bit of a down game. He played basically the same role that he's got. So I'm not actually too worried about the Brody selection moving forward. I'm still really happy to have him in my side. 565,000, averaging 105 for the season. I won't have the luxury to trade him out. So he will be missing this week. But I'll still definitely hold him for the remainder of the season. And I don't have any major concerns. He's sort of... Although we had a down game, it still passed the test to me, what I call the Fife test, given the fact that I, I truly believe that Fife didn't have too much of an impact on his game. So still happy with the Brody selection. Uh, Butters with an 87, again was looking good earlier on the game. Cop that knock. I was so worried. I thought, well, he's gone next week for sure with a concussion. Apparently not. He came back onto the field. The doctors from Port copped a little bit of flack for that, but you know, I won't make any comment because I'm far from medical expert, but 87, I suppose it's okay. And look at all these did not plays. Really, really hurt. Dunkley obviously out and McDonald out. So um, this week, round 14. So I'll quickly show you round 14. Then I'll show you my trades that I'm going to make and what the final team will actually look like. So we'll go... 
Are the blue dots still wrong? Nah, there we go. I logged in earlier and the blue dots are wrong. So Sicily's going to be out. Yep, not much that I can do there. Uh, midfield. So McRae will come back. That's nice, but Neil goes out. That's not. Oliver out. Unfortunate, but Miller comes in. That's all good. Brayshaw off after a magnificent 135. Oh, I've got Neil back on. I'm not concentrating, sorry. All right, so that's the best that I can do at this stage. If I don't decide to get Hayes out and he stays in, then that's what I'm doing in the rucks. Brody goes out. Dunkley comes in. McDonald's obviously off. So that's pretty much the best that I can do there at the moment. So if you go to the defensive line, the count is currently five. So one down. We've got two down. Owens won't play. That's three down. I'm going to count Carroll as out at the moment. Let's just call that four down. I'm actually, just for argument's sake and planning's sake, going to count Hayes as being out as well. Good chance of coming back. I think he was actually ill rather than omitted. So, But let's just call it five for argument's sake. So not looking fantastic. And then for argument's sake again, let's just say six. Let's just say six. So could be four could be six we'll see how we go if it is six i've obviously got to make a couple of trades here now it all depends on the team sheets what i'm actually going to do but at this stage i want to complete my forward line original plan was to bring dirksen up here and this is this is the other thing i forgot to mention and this is why this was such a bad trade with nank is because i was always planning on getting dirksen into my forward line so we could rotate with Paddy McCartan. And where was the man? Where was the man? And for some reason, I had this brain fade. So the play should have been, and it was a really obvious play, was to bring Dirksen in, trade McDonald out, and then get Ware back there. I think what was, a, you know, one thing that was preventing me from doing that was the fact that I already had six players playing here. And where back there it wouldn't have actually counted as an on-field score. So that's the thing that made it really difficult for me at the end of the day. So do you agree with that? Do you disagree? Yeah, all good either way, I suppose. There's arguments either way. All right, so what we're going to do, I think, is I'm getting a little bit sick of Carol. I think that I'm also going to get rid of Hayes. So let's just do this straight out now this man as well the teak as he's been called Bryn Teakle, actually booted three in the resis on the weekend and looked pretty exciting seems like a bit of a character said it was a sick experience you know that brings back to primary school the word sick uh, i love it so all right so we'll do that trade and we got 349k in the bank so it's enough for me to actually go up from just say someone like a Connor McDonald in one trade and complete my forward line, depending on who I actually want to bring in. So it could be McDonald. I'm actually getting a little bit sick of Carol, but yeah, we'll, we'll see how we go. We'll trade out McDonald for now. So how much will we actually have in the bank? We'll have 555. So we'll go by average here. All right, so English I've got, Dunkley I've got. Bont was the man that I was going to target along with Smith. So one of these two blokes were the blokes that I was always going to target for this position. Obviously can't get Bont just using the two trades. Baz, I'm absolutely not interested in now, obviously for obvious reasons. So do I go Bont and use an extra trade? It's a possibility. What does concern me a little bit is the fact that he is carrying that shoulder injury, possibly a little bit of an ankle injury as well. Again, he's had the bye, the week to rest up. That'll obviously do in the world of good. It's a bit of a tough one. It's a bit of a risk. What I'd love to do is watch him for at least another week and then make the decision, but I don't think I'll be able to afford to do that. So we skip Baz, as I mentioned. I've already got Brody. I've already got Parker. So if you look at that, I'm not really going to count Baz now as the top as a top six because he's going to be missing the action for a little while. So if Parker and Brody go up, I've basically got one, two, three, let's call it four of the top five. The next option I've got here is Libba, who's someone I'm highly considering. I can actually do that. Bring Libba into the side. Heaney, I just traded out, so I'm not even going to consider doing that. This is the other move that I have to consider. I have to consider. Stephen Cornelio. So if I was to bring in Cogs, and I'd hate to do it, but that would probably give me enough 
cash in the one trade, depending on how Wits and Nank go this week, to simply switch back from a Nank to a Wits or even a Nank to a Gorn. I'm not too sure, depending on what I'll do. That's certainly an option. Now, I'm going to save this for another video, I think, the Stephen Canilio discussion, because I've been talking about him a lot on Twitter this week. Um, a few yeah, really interesting arguments about whether or not there was any merit to actually trading him out a few weeks ago. I was trying to give an opinion, you know, to support both sides of the argument, but I may actually make a, a separate video purely on that topic, so it's an interesting one. But do I bring in Cogs? It's a possibility. It's a possibility. The issue that I've got is the fact that I traded him out a few weeks ago thinking to myself, no, he's not going to be a keeper. But then things do change. Leon Cameron's now out. His role seems pretty set right there in the midfield. He's playing ultra good football, but he has played some pretty lowly opposition. And his fixture does get a little bit more difficult in the coming weeks. So he's not going to be punching out 174s, but if he's punching out 100s to 105, that may actually be good enough, particularly at that price. But I can't wait another week. It's got to be this week to get in the forward. So Cogs is certainly another option. You know, Taranto's a no. None of these other blokes actually interest me. So it's pretty much going to be Cogs, Libba, or Bont using another trade. At this stage, I'm sort of leaning towards Libba. It's going to make it difficult, though, yeah, to get on to Nank. The other thing I could do, the other thing I could do, if I wanted, was to trade out Carroll, because he's just going to be a bit of a nothing pick, isn't he? Maybe bring in Judson Clark. Would you think that either him or Rioli play from week to week? Maybe the idea behind it is if you've got two, at least one of them is going to be in the senior side. I'm really not too sure about that. And in getting a bit of a dead rookie off for a bloke that looked pretty exciting, has some DPP, and may actually be a pretty good combo with Rioli, I can then also bring in Bont. Will I have enough to secure possibly Nank to Wits in the one trade though? So... 25k, probably not. That's an issue. I'm not too sure what to do here. It's it's really hurt me going, Nank. It was such a silly move. Hmm. Maybe I'll just see how Nank goes if I can afford to do that, depending on the fixture and times and all the rest. But let's just say I'll do this for now. Bond is an uber primo at the end of the day. It, his body just concerns me. Playing that forward role, I'd much rather him in the midfield. We'll see what happens. All right, so if we look at how I'll be set during the buys now, if I was to do that. So Clark comes back on. Well, we're not sure what's going to happen with Rioli, am I? Um, all right, let's just say boom, boom, Bond comes on there. All right, I'd still be one down in the ruck. So it's pretty safe to say that all these folks be playing. So I've got a full forward line there. I'm one down, two down, and then we'll be three down. So that's okay. We'll have 19 going into next week if that's the case. Final team will look like this. So... The defence has been set for a couple of weeks now. Cicely Sinclair, Hewitt, Crisp, Doherty in short. I'm, I'm pretty happy with, to be honest. Maybe a Dawson you'd like. Obviously, a Tom Stewart you're missing. And having Paddy McCartan as cover for the defensive line for now. A little bit disappointed I haven't managed to get that swing into my forward line. I still might. May make a change of plans. That's frustrating. But having him there, I think, yeah, he's, he's absolutely ideal for cover. In the midfield, so this, yeah, it gets a little bit dicey here. So I'll get Clary back on. Owens, what's going to happen to him for the rest of the season? I'm not too sure. Get him on, and I'll boot Greg Clark off and get my man Lockie Neal on. So I've got Clary Neal, McRae, Miller, Brayshaw, Cripps, Zeret, Petraka. So you're not really wrapped from your sort of M5 to M8, are you? You know, there's no Mills, 
There's no lead. Even though he had a down game on the weekend, I really like Walsh as a selection. Parrish, again, down game and injured, but I like him as a selection as well. But look, who knows? Uh, these guys could elevate their game. I think Brayshaw in particular has the potential to do so. And Walsh may go through a bit of a quiet period. Don't know what's happening with Darcy and these types either. So it's okay, but I am definitely missing a couple of the big dogs, I think, here. This is just a bit of a disaster, I think, in the rucks. And this is where it's going to hurt me. So what am I down to? Six trades left with 25K. And again, this is, isn't is definite. But yeah, I need to do something here by the end of the season. Nank and Darcy, compared to those people that have, say, a Gorn and Wits, how many points am I going to be leaking each week? Look, who knows? Darcy may go on one of his massive runs. We saw what he did last season. That's a big part of the reason why I got him in a couple of weeks ago, hasn't worked out so far, but it might. So look, I'm looking at worst case scenario here, but also trying to be realistic. I just think that this is a bit of a subpar combo, but it's life and that's probably what I'll run with for a little while anyway. And then the forward line. So I'm actually pretty stoked with this. Brody in there. So you've got English, Bond and Dunkley, who I think have the potential to be F1 to F3. You've got Parker, who I think is a pretty clear, uh, you know, top six forward. You've got Will Brody, who we're a little bit disappointed with last week, but I'm not panicking, as I said there. And Butters is probably that bloke who's a little bit dicey, but given the fact he's sitting at F6 at the moment, that's okay with me. So that's sort of how the final team is going to look. Not ideal, but I do have six trades left in the bank. 25k. I've got some really solid cover here in Paddy McCartan. I've got some solid cover, I think, in Greg Clark. I've got some DPP now in my midfield, which is good to get back. I think having the Clark Rioli combo could be beneficial, as it's my prediction anyway at this stage that one will be playing senior football at any particular time. You have got Castagna, I know, to come back. So, or did he play? I'm not too sure, but that's just, yeah, my prediction moving forward. I've now obviously got this link here, so English can easily cover in the ruck. And I'll tell you what, this could actually be ideal for this week, come to think of it. Because if I just go back to my buys, Tico, let's just say it's a miracle that Rioli gets back in. I could actually have an extra one for cover, which could be handy. But uh, yeah, look, overall, I think the forward line is looking really, really solid. But uh, look, that's a team for now, guys. I've probably raved on and on. You probably tuned out by now, but yeah, I suppose that's a little bit of a, a look into my mindset and my, my planning moving forward anyway. So that's it for now. I'll see you soon for the stocky. Only one buy to come and then things get back to normal a little bit. But what is normal in this game? I don't think there's any such words. So all the best for your planning for this week, guys. As I said, see you soon in the stocky. Take care. All the best.